We're talking about constant coordinate surfaces. I like this example a lot. Given the vector field E, and it's given in cylindrical coordinates, I can tell that because it's got a rho component, it's got a phi component, and it's got a z component. Find A, the vector component of E, at some point that is parallel to the line x equals 2, z equals 3. So those are the constant coordinate surfaces. And then part B, find the angle that E makes with the surface z equals 3 at that point. And there's another constant coordinate surface. All right, so let's get started. Point A, or part A, I guess. All right, well, first of all, look at point P, and you can, you can see that that is in cylindrical coordinates already. And you can tell that because the second component, which is in cylindrical coordinates, the, uh, the phi component, that's given as pi over 2. So you can tell that that's, that's an angle, pi over 2. All right, so we know that this is in cylindrical coordinates already, and we're looking for the vector component that's parallel to the line. So what does this even mean, the line x equals 2, z equals 3? Well, remember from the lecture that when two constant coordinate surfaces intersect, so two planes intersect, the x equals 2 plane and the z equals 3 plane, it makes a line. Okay, and that line that it makes is parallel to which axis? Yeah, hopefully you said the, the, the y axis, right? So you've got the constant x, you've got the constant z, they intersect to make something parallel, a line parallel to the y axis. So we can reformulate the question A to find the vector component of E at this point that's parallel to the y axis. Okay, so how are we going to do that? In other words, we want to project E onto the y axis. Okay, ah, so maybe we know how to do that now. When, well, when you put it that way, I know how to do that. So we're going to take E, which is negative 5 A rho plus 10 A phi plus 3 A z, right? And how do we project onto the y axis? Well, we dot with a unit vector along the y axis then times the unit vector in the y-axis, right? So if you, if you don't remember that, go back to, to, to vector projection, all right? But that's what we've got. Okay, so we need to do this, um, this dot product. So I'll just uh, use the distributive property of the dot product. And so this becomes negative 5 a rho dotted with a y. Okay, distribute that in plus 10 a phi dotted with a y okay plus 3a z dotted with a y okay that's going to give in the brackets is going to give me a scalar and then we're left with that other a y and so that's what gives me the vector okay now you go back to your notes and you see how was a y related to um, a phi and a rho. So you go back in your notes and you see that a y, you don't have to memorize these things, a y was sine phi a rho plus cosine phi a phi. Okay, hopefully that looks familiar. All right, so what we're going to do then is there substitute that in for these a y's here, at least inside the brackets for right now. So we're going to have something like this, and you'll see where we're going with this in a second. So we're going to have 5, uh, five a rho okay, dotted with sine phi a rho plus cosine phi a phi. Okay, then plus 100, or not, that's not 100, that's 10a, 10a phi dotted with, and then again, a y is sine phi a rho plus cosine phi a phi, right? Then plus 3 a z dotted with, uh, again, sine phi 
a rho plus cosine phi a phi. Okay, so that's everything in the brackets, and then we have this ay. I'm going I'm to leave it be ay for right now, but you could make the substitution if you wanted to. Okay, now what is this this big thing here, right? So if, if we distribute the dot product in, we have to keep in mind that the cylindrical, you know, the cylindrical basis vectors, the, the a rho, the a phi, the a z, they're orthogonal to one another. So what does that mean? Well, that a rho dotted with a rho is 1. So when I distribute this in, I get negative 5 a rho dotted with a rho, so negative 5 sine phi. Okay, and then again, the, the fact that they're orthogonal means that a rho dotted with a phi is 0. So negative 5 a rho dotted with cosine phi a phi is 0. Okay, so moving on then, we have, we have this 10 a phi dotted with sine phi a rho, so that's 0 because a phi and a rho are orthogonal. So now I've got 10 a rho distributed in cosine phi a, uh, sorry, 10 a phi distributed in cosine phi a phi. So a phi dotted with a phi is 1, and I get plus 10 cosine phi. Okay, then over here, when I bring the az dotted with a rho, that's zero because they're orthogonal, and az dotted with a phi is zero so that, because they're orthogonal. So this cleans up really nicely, and, and I've got just that there. Negative 5 sine phi plus 10 cosine phi a y. Okay, and so what is phi here? Well, phi is now, we're, we're going to evaluate it at this point, right? And in particular, that point has a phi value. Uh, of pi over 2. So evaluated there it, uh, is going to give me negative 5 times the sine of pi over 2. The sine of pi over 2 is, yeah, 1. And then plus 10 times the cosine of pi over 2. The cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So this just gives me negative 5 a y. So that is the vector component uh, that's parallel to the y-axis at that point. All right, so we've got the answer for part A. Let's move on to B. The angle that E makes with the surface Z equals 3 at that point. Okay, so if you're asked for an angle, you might want to use the dot product because that, that cosine, in the geometric interpretation of the dot product, there's that cosine that comes up. So let's, let's take negative 5 A rho, right, plus 10 A... I'm sorry, that's a bad looking A there. A phi, so this is just, I'm just copying E again, right? Okay, so then dotted with a Z, okay? And remember the geometric interpretation of the dot product. So this gives me the magnitude of E times the magnitude of AZ, but the magnitude of AZ is 1 then times the cosine of the angle in between E and Z. Okay, so when I do this dot product, right, so I've got, uh, again, a rho dotted with a Z is 0 because they're orthogonal. A phi dotted with a Z is 0 because they're orthogonal. So I just have 3 a Z dotted with a Z. a Z dotted with a Z is 1, so I just get 3. This thing is 3. And then the magnitude of E, the magnitude of E, well, that's neg the square root of negative 5 squared plus 10 squared plus 3 squared, right? So that is uh, 134, it looks like. So now I've got the, I can solve for the angle, right? The angle is uh, the inverse cosine of 3 over the square root of 134, and that comes out to 74.98 degrees. And I'm not, I'm not at the answer yet. What this has given me is, here's my surface, z equals 2, right? So I, I took the z, and here's the z-axis, right? Here's the z-axis. And so what I've found 
is this angle. Here's here's my E field, right? And what I found is the angle in between E and the Z axis. So that's the 74.98. What I, but what I was asked for is this angle here. So what does that make that angle? Well, if we round to two, to three significant digits, that makes that 15.0 degrees. That is the answer, 15.0.